Hi, I'm Xavier Vavasseur, Naval News. I'm here with my pal Chris Cavas. He's based here in DC, and today he's the one who's going to take you around the show floor. So, Chris, hi. Well, hi, Xavier. So, what are we going to see today? Today we're going to talk to in situ, a division of Boeing. They have their integrator UAV, which is actually now integrated with a quadcopter to, to give it a vertical lift capability, vertical takeoff capability, and the quadcopter actually helps them bring it, bring them back in the, for part of the recovery system. That's pretty interesting. BAE Systems is going to tell us about the new Mod 3 anti-air variant of their very popular, very well-known Mark 38 gun system. Uh, GD NASCO, we're going to take a quick look at the GD NASCO yard in San Diego, which is in full rate production on fleet oilers, expeditionary sea base ships, and a very large uh, program of ship repair among the fleets. And I talked to Spartan to discuss Sono Buoys, a niche topic, as well as a new system they designed to launch UAVs from submarines. And Chris is going to talk to Air Environment about the Blackwing UAV and the Switchblade. In situ specializes in unmanned aircraft. And with us today is Dave Fluker. So uh, what we've done is instead of using our conventional catapult uh, type launch and skyhook recovery system, we know that people are looking for a, a more expeditionary, smaller space, smaller operating area to launch and recover the air vehicle. So we've taken integrator and basically merged it up with a, a vertical lift machine, right? And so now we lift that, that integrator up while it's cradled underneath a octocopter device, right. lift it up to a launch altitude, release the, the air vehicle. It goes and, it's, and flies its very long endurance flight uh, for very long range uh, without the burden of any sort of uh, booms or uh, you know, ex extra attachments that take away from that endurance or the payload capacity and give the customer the range and endurance they're really looking for. In order to get integrator aboard the, even the smallest vessels, uh, this, this new system uh, that we call integrator VTOL is, is, I think, a really practical way to do that and minimize the footprint on the ship, minimize the, the uh, storage space. Uh, so we worked with the Navy and they gave us an opportunity to come out on, on board uh, the destroyer, Paul Hamilton. Um, we took our, our, our system out and uh, demonstrated that in, uh, off the coast of California in real world, uh, ship rocking and rolling and it performed quite successfully in that single demo. We look forward to additional uh, tests and demonstrations in the, in the coming months, um, but so far the, the, the Navy has been very receptive to the capability and impressed with the uh, reduction in footprint um, while maintaining that, that endurance and long range and payload flexibility. Even more interesting maybe than the launch system right. is the recovery system. Sure. I mean, this, is, this is a different approach on, on your usual high wire right. contraption. Yeah, so Chris, so we've, this is not new for us really. The, uh, the system evolved from a smaller octocopter that, that we used to, to launch Scan Eagle. Um, and between the two, two different varieties, we've had, uh, working with our, our supplier partner, we've had over a thousand launches and recoveries uh, using Scan Eagle and now Integrator. Um, it, as, you, as you mentioned, it lifts up, but, but to come back home, uh, we really use the same adaptation from that skyhook rope recovery. So in this case, the, the octocopter climbs up from the deck with a rope attached, the skyhook rope attached, and the, the integrator merely just uses the same hook to, uh, to basically be recovered, kind of snag like an aircraft carrier arresting gear, um, and then it's lowered to the deck. That oct octocopter can carry 300 pounds, so it's under tension, uh, it's a pulley system that's it's, uh, really maneuverable and it's been very effective for us so far. So a lot of people are familiar with the Mark 38 gun system. It's a 25 millimeter gun system on many U.S. Navy ships. There's a Mark 1, there's a Mark 2, and now there's a Mark 3. Here to tell us about it is Nate Carlson. He's the director of Naval Gun Systems for BAA Systems. Nate, what is the deal with Mod 3? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Good to talk to you again. The Mark 38 Mod 3 is widely fielded in our U.S. Navy. There are over 400 delivered across 14 classes of ships. What we're introducing this week at Sea Air Space is an upgrade to that system called the Mark 38 Mod 3 Counter Air Plus. And what that upgrade brings is flexibility with the cannon. You can use either a 25 millimeter cannon or a 30 millimeter cannon. 
The reason that's important is that opens up the ability to use air burst munitions, which are really great with dealing uh, with the threats that we're facing today um, around the world. Now Mark 1 is a manual operated, Mark, Mark Mod 2 is a remotely operated. This is, this is also remotely operated. That, that's correct. The Mod 2, and we delivered the Mod 2 and the Mod 3, which are fully stabilized, uh, uh, automatically stabilized systems. Th they uh, replaced the Mod 1s, which were manually stabilized. And so as we have fielded those widely through the f fleet, we've continually upgraded them. And this upgrade is the latest one, Counter Air Plus, which I talked to the Canon upgrade, but also includes a, a deeper magazine, three times the magazine capacity over the, the base Mod 2 and Mod 3, and also increased barrel elevation. And the ability to use airburst munition, the deeper magazines, and the higher cannon elevation greatly enhance the effectiveness against challenging threats like drone and sea surface uh, swarms. Uh, it's a mechanical upgrade, the Counter Air Plus upgrade. All of the major electronic systems are reused and therefore just changing out these mechanical structures uh, adds a significant amount of capability and reusing those major electronic subsystems help, helps us minimize the cost for the customer. With the Mod 3 we bring in a coaxial gun system, we bring in cyber, additional cyber security, and we bring in uh, a base counter unmanned aerial system capability which is really about the algorithm of dealing with drone threats the, the original Mod 2 was fielded to, to deal with sea surface threats. When you go to the drone threat, you add a dimension, and that algorithm uh, is intended to, to deal with drones. So has the U.S. Navy done any testing with this yet? Absolutely, yes. The base Mod 3 system has been fully tested and is being fielded. We're offering this upgrade to augment that base Mod 3 system. Among the general dynamics shipbuilding companies that have a display here at Sierra Space is GD NASCO. GD NASCO, formerly National, National Steel Shipbuilding Company, in San Diego. This is a really unique yard. Uh, I had the opportunity to visit again uh, just in uh, February. They do more big ship construction and ship repair in the same location than really any other yard in the United States. It's unique in that sense. What they build are these very large uh, expeditionary sea base ships and new fleet oilers, John Lewis class fleet oilers. This is the new oiler John Lewis on, on uh, sea trials, still is yet, yet to be active in service but about to be. Uh, there, there are probably up to 20 of these ships in the sea uh, and in the fleet plan. Right now the company has delivered John Lewis. They're working on five other oilers in production, either already launched and fitting out building on the ways or in various uh, forms of uh, construction throughout the shipyard. The ESBs, they just delivered ESB-6, John L. Canley. They're working on uh, ESB-7, the Semantic, and they have a contract for ESB-8. They're also doing multiple ship repair at the shipyard in San Diego. This is serious stuff. Uh, they have three destroyers in at the moment, um, the Spruance, Pinckney, and Curtis Wilbur. The Pinckney is very interesting because it's the first ship with the CWIP, Service Electronic Warfare Improvement Program. It's a new version of the very uh, long-standing SLQ Slick 32 electronic countermeasure system. It's a vastly improved, vastly larger system. And the Pinckney is the first ship with that installation. That's being handled at GD NASCO. They also have a cruiser that they're still modifying that's back at the base. So it's just a very, very busy shipyard. Always a remarkable place because they have a very tight uh, footprint in terms of their property line. The San Diego Bay is on one side, the uh, uh, BAE system is on, on another side, uh, San Diego Naval Station on another, and a railroad tracks on the other. There's no way to, to expand. They do an awful lot of stuff in a very confined space. Always an impressive yard, just a lot happening. Oh, I, I left out they're also doing an amphibious ship uh, availability under repair as well right now. So five ships under repair. Uh, lots of ships building, just a really dynamic shipyard in San Diego. We are now with Spartan to discuss Sono buoys. I am with uh, James Bayat. James, good morning. Thanks good morning. for welcoming us on your booth. Good morning. 
so can you please first uh, tell us about uh, Spartan? Uh, there's been a, a change in the ownership of the company recently? That's correct. Uh, so Spartan is a uh, sonar buoy company and also an undersea warfare solutions company. Uh, we were purchased about two years ago by Elbit Systems of America and we're here uh, under the banner of Elbit Systems of America representing the maritime branch of uh, Elbit Systems of America. James, can you briefly tell us a little more about the different type of uh, buoys you, you manufacture? Yes, uh, so we, five variants, uh, two of them are passive buoys, uh, meaning that they uh, will sit in the ocean and receive sound energy without alerting uh, targets. And the other two are active buoys, uh, so they emit sound energy, and in some cases that, uh, the, that uh, energy is received as it bounces off of a potential target by another one of the passive buoys. In one case, that buoy will emit sound energy and it will receive that emissions when it bounces off of the target coming back to it. Uh, we also produce a uh, bathometer, uh, a bathy buoy, which measures temperature and depth, uh, which allows for the operators to understand the uh, water properties that they're going to uh, actually operate in. Are there any other projects in which uh, Spartan is involved regarding uh, submarines? Oh, we, we do a lot of undersea warfare solutions. Uh, one that I'll talk to you about is the submarine launched unmanned aerial system. Uh, it is a, uh, th in a three inch canister or three inch diameter, about 36 inches long. And we'll put a, an unmanned aerial system in it uh, by our uh, partner in that uh, aero environment. And once it reaches the surface, that uh, unmanned aerial system will deploy. Uh, and it has a payload on it, so it, it uh, brings capability back to, uh, or extends the uh, situational awareness uh, for the uh, submarine. Is this uh, still at R&D stage, or is it fielded already? Oh, these, they are in production, yes. Uh, so the United States Navy is actually uh, purchasing these uh, today. We're now here at Aero Environment. Aero Environment is a maker of loitering munitions. This is the famous switchblade. This is a munition that has uh, become quite effective in the war. The U.S. has been supplying Ukraine with a, quite a number of them. They continue to ask for them. They've been highly effective. This big one here, this is the Switchblade 600. Over here is the Switchblade 300, obviously smaller. And the company Air Environment is still, still continuing to develop this thing, this uh, smaller Switchblade 300, into other uses. Here to tell us about it is Charles Dean. He's the Vice President of Global Business Development. Switchblade has actually become a household word, not only in the United States, but in Ukraine, a very uh, well understood capability that the U.S. is providing into those forces. Many hundreds of Switchblade 300s have gone on in, into the country. We produce you know, thousands of Switchblade 300s a year. You mentioned development. Switchblade 300 is a fully, you know, fully produced product. Yet, like all manufacturers of products, we're always looking at ways to enhance the capabilities of the Switchblade 300. What's on display here at this show is the Block 20 model, a brand new model that's going into production that carries on the traditions of what the Ukrainians are experiencing with the successful use of 300 in their fight against Russia, but it provides a longer flight time, which means more loitering time, more time to find and locate and identify targets as they conduct their operations against the enemy. What we see here is fired from the ground, very easy to set up like a mortar, but also we have the Black Wing system. Black Wing is of the family of 300. They have the same form factors in general. Black Wing carries some additional sensors on it. Black Wing is launched from a submarine. So our unmanned aircraft actually start from underwater. So the submarine will launch the, the Black Wing whenever the skipper wants to be able to see over the horizon, which as you would know from a submarine, very hard to see with your visuals over the horizon. In fact, impossible. But Blackwing gives the skipper that ability to see uh, long distances uh, with the Blackwing aircraft system. So this Blackwing sub-launch system is already in operation? Yes, sir. It's in the United States Navy. The United States Navy. Uh, and you're trying to market these overseas as well? Uh, other countries are interested in it, for sure. Now, there are only a limited number of countries that have submarines. 
Um, and so those countries that do have them within our allied forces are interested in this type of capability. It, it is a phenomenal leap ahead in submarine warfare. You know, the Black Wing will go over the horizon uh, beyond the submarine to about 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers? Yeah. And the question I get asked for people is when these things are launched, they're loitering, they're looking for a target. They don't always find a target. They fall to the ground. Did they just blow up when they hit the ground? Is there an in, in, inert way or what? Wing is a reconnaissance aircraft. At the end of Black Wing's flight, it goes into the ocean. So on the, the ground fight with the Switchblade 300 and the Switchblade 600, the operator can detonate his munition while it's flying before it uh, runs out of battery power. It just blows up in the air then? It blows up in the air.